We just finished installing 212 solar panels on the roof at Hans Grohe's UK headquarters, which is enabling their head office in Warwick to save over £18,000 per year on electricity bills. In this video, I talked to the operations director about why they went solar and how effortless they found the process to be. I also run through the design, installation and the various benefits that they will see from the solar system. Hans Grohe has a clear sustainability plan called Eco2030. This is a program that defines a clear roadmap for sustainable action and environmentally friendly innovation. Part of this includes reducing the company's carbon footprint, which is one of the reasons that they're going solar. So I'm here with uh, Giles, the operations director for Hans Grower. And yeah, why did you decide to get the solar system? I think for us, one of the things that um, we wanted to make sure we do as a part of our green company policy is to ensure that all of our uh, yep. buildings around the world are carbon neutral or carbon negative where we can possibly be. Um, and I think the, 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 the simplest way of doing that uh, at the moment in this current climate is to use solar energy. It is, yeah, certainly. My colleague, Steph, who's part of our business solar quotation team, started designing the system in April 2024. At the start, she designed for a 240 panel system totaling 107 kilowatt peak, using standard sized 430 watt panels. Following a site visit further down the line, she realized that we'd actually be able to fit much larger jumbo panels on the roof, which are 595 watts each. She worked out that while we wouldn't be able to fit quite so many of these, only 212 in total, the larger panels will enable hands grower to get a larger surface area and therefore increasing the panel size brought the total system rating up to 126.14 kilowatt peak, which is what we settled on for the final specification. As part of the design work, Steph also prepared some very detailed solar generation and usage modeling to accurately show the benefits that hands grower would see from growing solar. The model looks at how the solar system will perform in every half hour of the year. It also takes into account the half hourly electricity consumption data that Hans Grohe provided us with. So we're basing the estimations on real world data from the building. The model showed how the system would perform in different months. For example, in January, the system is expected to generate 2,944 kilowatt hours, 90% of which will be used by the building. Hans Grohe's electricity usage is highest in January, and so the solar generation will only account for 18.4% of the total usage. In May, however, the system will be performing at its best, and is estimated to generate 14,251 kilowatt hours. The site should only use around 11,900 kilowatt hours in that month, meaning that there will be an abundance of excess solar generation, which will be exported to the grid for a profit. Even though the solar is expected to generate much more than the building will use in May, it will only account for around 65.7% of the building's usage, because the solar generation window doesn't quite match up with the building's electricity consumption window. This means that there may be a case to add on commercial battery storage in the future, so that Hans Grower can store that excess solar generation for use in the evening and in the early morning. We decided not to go with battery storage as well at this stage, but over the coming year, we will review the real life data from the system to see if battery storage will be a good investment and worth adding on down the line. Overall, the 126 kilowatt peak solar system is expected to generate 104,444 kilowatt hours per year, of which 62,000 will be used on site and the remaining 42,000 kilowatt hours will be exported to the grid. So 60% of the generation will be used by the building, which will make it around 41% grid independent on average over the course of the year. On a typical weekday in summer, however, the building should be around 67% powered by solar. The installation went very smoothly and it took seven working days to complete all the roof and electrical work. The system was commissioned two days later and has been performing well ever since. And finally, how's the process been? Um, to be honest, it, it, it couldn't have been any simpler. Um, so we had a project manager that looked after it for us, um, but from, from day one it was very clear that this is what we we're going to get, this is what it's going to look like, this is how long it was going to take. Um, and I think other than there was a, a minor slip with one of the scaffolding guys, not something on the last day, but it was no, no drama. But 
you know, not only was it a simple process, but partway through the process, because the technology and the solar panels had evolved, we were then notified we were going to get more efficient solar panels that we'd signed up for, and we didn't have to pay an extra, it was just included. So yeah. for us, it's been better than seamless. At Spirit Energy, we have a team of full-time in-house installers, most of whom have been with the company for over five years. By having all our installers in-house and training them up ourselves, we can ensure that we consistently work to the highest standards on every project. Hans Grohe's roof is trapezoidal sheet metal, which is very quick and easy to install on, and therefore very cost-effective, which is one of the reasons that the system has achieved such a high rate of return. Most commercial pitch roofs are trapezoidal, and if the building you work in has a roof like this, then it's even more likely that it's worth putting solar on it. Remember that you don't have to own the building for it to be worthwhile putting panels on the roof. Both the tenant and the building owner will benefit from a solar system. Often, commercial roof spaces have some very large skylights which need to be considered when preparing for installation. In this case, the skylights were quite tall, so we actually created exclusion zones with the scaffolding to keep them protected while the roofers were fitting the panels. The 110 kilowatt solar inverter sits next to the main incoming supply and distribution board. The DC cabling simply drops straight down from the roof above, so the cable runs were relatively straightforward. Under RC26, there are strict safety standards for solar installs, but generally we will over-specify in certain areas. In particular, we like to install arc boxes, which can be used to further protect the MC4 connections at the end of each string. So something that's important for me to show you is this thing, which is called an arc box. Now we, we recommend using these for every commercial job and effectively what they do is they go around the man-made MC4 connections and if something were to go wrong with those MC4 connections then because it's high voltage DC there could be potential that a spark happens and maybe a fire. So what this is is a ceramic containment and if there is a fire it will obviously contain it and suffocate it. So Hans Grower should see an £18,000 reduction in their electricity bills. As an investment, the system should have an internal rate of return of 34% and a net present value of over £420,000. The system should pay for itself within four years and over 20 years it should achieve a total ROI of 689%. There are other important benefits that Hansgro will get having gone solar. Larger companies are going to have to disclose their carbon emissions and in the future may get penalised for not doing enough to offset their carbon footprint as the UK pushes towards net zero. Companies will need to do something called carbon accounting and disclose the carbon emissions from their entire supply chain. Hansgrohe are making great progress with their Eco 2030 programme and this solar system will contribute to that by offsetting 22,118 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions in the first year, which will go a long way to reduce their carbon footprint and future-proof against net zero requirements.